I know, this can seem all so abstract, but really the inverse function theorem can be very physical, very concrete. Here's a great example of how this gets used in action in robotics, looking at inverse kinematics. If you recall, back from chapter one, when we talked about the kinematic map of a robot arm, this is the function that takes as inputs all the different joint angles, and then as an output gives you, let's say, the position of the end effector, of the, the part that the robot arm is holding. That position, x, is a function of the angles, phi. Can you, say, choose three angles, phi1, phi2, phi3, and locally solve for these as a function of the end position, keeping all other angles fixed? So I, I want to put the, the ball right here. What do I need to set the angles at? This is called the inverse kinematics problem, and it's, it's not so easy to solve. It's not obvious. Doing the forward kinematics is easy. That's just multiplying a bunch of rotation matrices together. So in practice, it's useful to know when you can't solve the inverse kinematics, when your arm gets locked up but you don't know what that inverse kinematic function is. Nevertheless, you can predict when it has a nice solution versus when it might get locked up by taking the restricted function, three angles to the three output coordinates, computing the derivative there, and then using the inverse function theorem by just computing the determinant of the derivative. That tells you when you can solve the inverse kinematics problem locally. Okay, now it's maybe worth um, seeing this in action and, and seeing what happens with this robot arm. With the arm on the left, this is something that has three degrees of freedom. There are only three angles that are changing locally, and you can see what is happening to the end location of the object that the arm is holding. It's uh, changing its x, y, and z coordinates locally. If you compute the derivative of the forward kinematic map, you would get something invertible. But we can go beyond simple position. In the robot arm on the right, it is holding an object that needs to not only be positioned correctly, x, y, and z, but it has to be oriented correctly as well. That's going to require three angles, Euler angles, back from volume one, if you remember those, leading to a total of six variables, position and orientation data. Now, this robot arm on the right also has six rotation angles associated with the arm, and those are being changed ever so slightly. Can you see, are there enough degrees of freedom? Is there enough invertibility to be able to solve inverse kinematics in this case? It's not obvious. Just from looking at it, you really need to compute the derivative of the forward kinematic map and see if that six by six matrix is invertible.